Welcome Dragon Champions to another Dragon Long Gaming Presents Dragon Champions video. I am your host, Dragon. Thank you so much for being here. If you are new around here, hit that subscribe button, hit that notifications bell, drop a comment down below. If you like this video anytime, hit that like button and let's get into today's video. Today, I'm going to break down the human faction for you guys. Um, the human faction is going to be needed to unlock more doom as a lot of people have put out there some been some great videos out in the community about more doom. I will be covering him. I'm going to be doing a live stream. Uh, I believe the it's going to be Monday at the unlock time. Uh, I have not been released to go back to work yet. And so I will be here Monday uh, producing content and live streaming the event. So please come and check that out. Uh, I really think it's going to be a whole lot of fun, but what I wanted to do today is go ahead and talk about the humans, talk about them in their entirety, all of the humans in the faction, uh, about what, you know, who you want to use, who you're probably going to use. Uh, if you're a whale in this game, you're probably going to be just fine. You're going to have Soleus, Freezard, Snorri, Cru Cruel, and Little Batty completely leveled up like I do. Um, you're going to be, you know, rocking huge speed mods, great mods and all every single one of your characters. I don't think you're going to have any problems getting through this event uh, at all. If you do that, there might be, you know, I have played the event, but the event's not fully done, so we can't release anything. So I, as soon as the event goes, we'll play it live and then I'll make some content and some videos about, you know, best comp, best comps and that sort of thing. But what I can tell you right now is about the human faction. And you're looking at my personal account right now. As you see, I do have Selena. I bought her packs, um, 145 shards. I'm not going to unlock her. I don't think it is necessary for me to do that because I have Soleus. Um, you absolutely need a healer absolutely need a healer um that's why they dropped her uh, there's no doubt in my mind um that's the case uh female harry potter would be needed uh for more doom if you didn't have soleus but the fact is and then this is just how i feel about it the fact is is that if you do not have soleus you're gonna struggle this event's gonna be very very hard um it's going to be very hard you're gonna need these characters leveled up you're gonna need them um yeah you're it's gonna be very hard and so I, do, I just, I know that I've played through the event. Um, it's very hard. You're going to need them. You're going to need good runes. You're going to need these characters. Um, and so if you, if you don't have them, keep pushing, keep pushing, uh, keep doing that. We'll get some guides out to you about the minimum, the minimum requirements and that sort of stuff. But you, it's going to be a hard event. So expect it to be a hard event. Uh, so let's look through uh, the different ones. Everybody knows who Soleus is. He's the best healer in the game. Uh, he's probably one of the best characters in the game. More Doom is coming. Uh, you know, we have Zara now, which is really breaking up the meta. More Doom, I think, is going to be a meta-defining character. But Soleus is by far what I would call a tier one character. Let's remember what I said about tier one characters all the way back in the day. Let's go back. Tier one characters are, in my opinion, characters that stand alone by themselves that don't need a whole lot of anyone else to make them good this game does have synergies between characters but Soleus just as a flat out healer and what he can do he doesn't need anybody else and so he is absolutely a tier one character he's been the meta he's been the leader he's been dominating in arena dominating in everybody's uh tournaments Everybody has him, everybody's using him, and that's great. And he, he's got to be fast, and he's got to be strong, and he's got to be larger than life, right? So he is an amazing character. Obviously, my speed on him is lacking. I am not the luckiest person in the world with my speed mods um, and my speed secondaries, but it's super, super important. So if you don't have him uh, for this event, you're absolutely going to need her, but I don't know how you're going to get her to seven stars in time. They're just, you know, you just don't have a lot of time to farm up. You got to buy all the packs and you got to be farming her every day. And I've been doing that since she came out refreshes every single day and I'm at 145 shards. So I, I don't see that happening now. If and here's what I would tell you. If Soleus does not come back around again before more doom, you're going to have to have her leveled up and geared up. If Soleus comes back around, you would be better off getting your orcs, leveling them, getting them up to where you need them to be and using them. Zara's going to make 
Zara, if you have her and you can get her to seven stars by the next Solius event, she's going to make it really easy. I doubt that's going to be the case. But if you have just your standard orcs, your standard five, um, you know, and you have them at level 70 or a little bit above with some decent mods and fully maxed out, you're going to have no problem getting through Solius. Uh, it may take a little bit of tries, but you're going to be fine. So that's what I would recommend you to do. I would recommend you to work still on your orcs, get Solius, do more doom the second time around. If more doom comes back around and Solius isn't back around, you're going to have to get Selena. Um, Freezard, right? So we all know who Freezard is at this point, but if you don't know, he's probably one of the best damage dealers in the game. Um, he has great synergy. Uh, he a lot of damage, a lot of output can be very fast, can do a lot of magic damage. He's very, very powerful. Um, going through his abilities, I don't really think we need to do that. I think everybody knows that he can cheat death, um, and him and Snorri have a lot of synergy between each other with uh, cheat death. Uh, he's got two AoEs, one that hits everybody, one that hits three. Uh, so that's very, very viable. Snorri also hits, has an AOE, hits everyone. He can be quite quick um, when you use his ability here, giving him 50% uh, turn meter and 40 more speed. So it ends up popping him up to 207. My Snorri is slower. Uh, and, and that sort of thing. Am I on my personal account? I am. My Snorri is slower, uh, but I think that he will be just fine. Uh, if I need to move some stuff over, I will do that. But currently, I think that he's probably fast enough to get the event done. Uh, Cruel, another great character. She's a tier one character. As I said, Freezard is a tier one character in my book. Snorri is not. Snorri is like a tier two character, maybe tier three. He does much better when he has Freezard or Revel. Um, and so because he's more of a tier three character um, or a tier two character, uh, I think originally I probably had him as a tier two, but these days he's more of a tier three, but he's certainly above all the other characters in, in 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 when we're talking about the humans i think because of his synergy and because he has cheap death he's weak though he has very little health very little shields he's just gets targeted and blasted too easily in my opinion uh, i always have had that opinion about him um, i've been <laughs> blasted on on the internets right for that opinion but i think he's just a little too squishy but Snorri still, I think, does a good job, and I think he's going to do well in this event um, if you have him already up. And a lot of people do have him and Freezard because they've been giving out sh shards. They're easy. They're free to play, accessible. They're easily to get a hold. They're easy to get a hold of. Cruel, on the other hand, she's not as easy to get a hold of, right? She's she was somebody you ended up having to get back in the day. Um, you know, she only has one node. She's a tough farm, but she's really, really, really integral um, just to the human faction in general and to the, the meta. Now, I'm not saying how they're going to necessarily affect um, the uh, way the, it's going to work in the actual event. Uh, there are lots of different ways to complete this event. And so I don't want you to think that you're, if you don't have these five characters, you're screwed. That's not necessarily true. You have to have a healer though. You're going to have to have that healer. Um, so and th just keep that in mind. Um, Solius is, Solius is awesome. Um, Selena is not bad, uh, but I'll talk about her in a second. Um, Little Batty, certainly one of the best tanks in the entire game. Uh, Little Batty is. She is absolutely phenomenal. In my opinion, she's probably the best or the second best uh, tank in the game. Her and Trumgar are right there with each other. Um, of course, her ability to... to uh, you know, under Solius counterattack, right? That's really, really nice. So she has, you know, a 50% chance to counterattack under Solius as opposed to the 100% that uh, Trumgar gives himself when he taunts. However, you know, she does give um, turn meter reduction. You know, she has, she removes buffs. Uh, she blinds, which is a huge, huge ability. And she cheats death on her own as well, which is super, super nice. And, you know, she just, and she's just great at absorbing punches. She can just take a lot of damage. Um, she really, really can. So, that's really, really good for her. Uh, like I said, second best tank in the game. Definitely a tier one character. 
That's why you saw her in the metal for so long. Uh, Trump Guard, same type of thing. Tier 1 character. These characters, you can just plug and play them, and they do very, very well. You don't have to have them in a human team, even though humans have dominated. Um, then we get to Robin Bad, who's just bad. He's just a bad character um, all the way around. He really doesn't have a whole lot of viability. Um, I don't know how you know he or may or may not affect the, you know, the event. I assume most people haven't leveled him up a whole lot like me. Look, I mean, he's at 57 i actually thought he might be good back in the day because he has this you know can't be dodged this tactic can't be dodged critical you know i thought that was really good against kim ken lee back in the beginning and i leveled him up and he actually did do a little bit for me when ken lee was just wrecking everybody with his dodge but he's been crap since um his his name robin bad is not just a clever name uh he really just is an awful character um and so i <laughs> He's he's at the bottom of the list. If there is a tier list, you know, one through four, he would definitely be a tier four character. He's just really not used for much. I know he, he, there was, you know, we put videos out about how to solo the raid back in the day, and he was able to do that uh, because of his turn meter reduction um, and that sort of thing. Uh, but it's he's just not good. Um, you know, it, it decrease the target's turn meter by on a critical hit. But once again not not worth putting time into darian you would think okay now this is just me darian is the starting character in the game if you know much about the storyline which i don't want to give he's one of the main characters in the game but he's just horrible he does not do much of anything he is good against orcs no doubt about that um but he's just not particularly good right he deals armor ink gives armor increase he gives himself dodge um you know he gives himself armor increase and that sort of stuff he also has a dodge mechanic right increases physical armor and at the end of his turn he can gain dodge for one turn every you know on a 50 percent thing and then of course his basic commander in chief you know he's just not good when you're comparing it to soleus and so when you're looking for a leader for the event if you don't have soleus you're probably going to be turning to darian which a lot of people don't have leveled up anyway because you not really needed him for anything and so you know can you use darian sure i think you probably could use darian you're gonna have to you know, finagle the lineup a little bit, probably, right? You're going to have to level up characters that you normally wouldn't level up and spend resources and time and money into these characters um, to get them up and to be able to have them. Obviously, 65, I'm not going to bother. Eric Shieldbreaker, okay? Now, this one's kind of controversial. This character, you know, he's good when he's good and he's bad when he's bad. I... You know, standalone by himself, you know, there's an argument to be made that he actually is a tier one character based on my own definition. Um, and the reason for that is that even if you shed past his his, uh, you know, passive, which relies on humans, humans have been in the meta, but there's been not a place for him really in the meta. But there have been people, you know, who've been using this rousing cry gains debuff immunity and armor increase and applies it to all his characters. That ability is phenomenal. And it does does not need humans it just can go to anyone so as i said in one of my other videos this character may be needed may be needed for more doom i don't know i have stuff saved up i do as you can see i have enough scrolls i have money i have gear if i need to push him all the way up to gear 11 i'm gonna do it um and the nice part about that is we have a tournament going on right now for a uh, lake and he's one of the characters so he shows up a lot in tournaments too so he becomes has some viability here as a gladiator and as a character who shows up regularly in tournaments so leveling him up may not be a bad idea and based on like i said on my own definition he may actually be a tier one character even though he does not really you know he doesn't really seem to have a lot of viability uh if when we talk about him he does a ton of damage he gives himself damage increase so he doesn't need somebody to do that for him he does a bunch of damage against shields he hits like a truck um he really does and then he does um, you know, 180% physical damage plus an extra 80% of physical damage that penetrates shields. 
he is a hard hitting machine. Um, he's a single target DPS character who just really doesn't need humans. He becomes even better in a human party, right? Increase physical damage by 30% and an additional 5% for each human. Come on. He just does a ton, a ton of damage. And so if you don't have it, um, Eric Shield Breaker, and you're interested. Obviously, I don't. This is my personal account. Obviously, I don't have it. But if you do, or you're thinking about leveling him, and you need that extra human, he may be the way to go. With me, I went with Snorri, and the reason why I did that is because simply because of resources. I already had a lot more invested into Snorri. I already pushed him. I already had runes on him. I already had his abilities maxed out. I just didn't have his gear, and so he was already level eight. He was already geared up to like nine and he was, you know, and he already had all his, all his, uh, all his uh, skills. If I had to do it the right way, if I had them both at one to zero, okay. If I had them both at zero, nothing on them, I would level up Eric Shieldbreaker first, not Snorri. And the reason for that is because he just does more damage. He has greater synergy with the humans than Snorri does. He gives you the buff immunity and he's more of a tier one character. He can plug and play. Plus he has a lot of viability in the a lot, a lot of viability in tournaments, which are a great place to get wonderful runes and that sort of stuff and can really help you out. Plus, he's a gladiator. And as you've as we've seen in other videos, gladiators are super, super important because they help you get those really hard ability scrolls. OK, last but not least, let's talk about Selena. So I'm going to flip over to my test account. This is the whale test account. This is the one I use to be able to show off just you know is you know all the stuff that's going on here's my selena on the test account as you can see i've got massive amounts of runes i mean massive amounts of runes um on her 240 speed completely maxed out uh you know she's got health her health is quite low her shields are a little high, you know pretty decent but she's squishy just like most um you know Let's talk about her in a little bit more in depth because she is new. Her Dying Light ability, 200% of her magic damage and 70% chance to do Tenacity Decrease for two turns. Not too bad. It's pretty good. It's the only attack she has. It does pretty well. Um, I, I've used her. She does a good bit of damage. Not too bad. I want her to be fast because I want her to heal as often as possible and get her turns back as quickly as possible. Um, her magic damage is pretty good. I mean, it's right up there with Soli Assist. However, she just doesn't have the same healing capabilities and she's just not as fast as he is. This is the same Soleus one I have here and Soleus is about 157 speed, I think, um, with the same setup. I could be wrong about that. Please don't quote me. Um, if you go back and do the math, you're like, hey, you know, Dragon, you're wrong. I think it's like in 150s or, or 250s. So her last ability clauses or her second ability clauses healing it heals a targeted ally by 280% of her magic damage and an extra 20% of their max health. Very similar to Soleus, except for it doesn't give any of the buffs, right? Doesn't give cheat death. It doesn't do any of that. Doesn't give them damage up. Doesn't give them tenacity. Nothing along those lines. And so she's just kind of a lesser version of Soleus, right? Um, a Ammo's mirror here heals allies for 400% of Selena's magic damage. If allies are inflicted by debuffs, applies random two buffs of the other of the same duration. Okay, so this ability is really kind of interesting. It heals and then it, it but then it changes the debuffs to the opposite buffs. I think that this is a little weird. I'm I've tested it. It does look like what happens is she just puts the opposite buffs on there, which essentially negates the buffs. I think the way it should work, and maybe it does work this way, and I'm just not aware. And maybe you can correct me down um, in the uh, you know comments below. But I think it should be a cleanse. If she was cleansing the buffs, and then you know if she was adding her the opposite buffs, and then cleansing away the other buffs, that would make her, this ability really good. But it doesn't seem like that's what's happening. Um, and so, and it's random. All right, if it were one of those ones where it, you know, I, obviously you don't want to make her better than Soleus, but you know, if she were a cleanse and then put them all up for one turn, all the debuffs that she had for one turn, that would make her very, very viable as a healer away from Soleus, and that would give her some tier one capabilities. 
And then her last one, Raider's Secrets, copies two random buffs from an enemy uh, at the end of the turn and applies them to random allies for the same duration. I don't like this ability. I really, really don't. And the reason for that is random buffs from an enemy at the end of the turn and apply them to random allies. As long as Taunt's not one of them, I'm perfectly okay with this ability. But however, the way it reads, it says that it's just random buffs. So that means it could be sticking random Taunts from the other team and putting them on random people on your team. You want to talk about RNG. This is a real problem, in my opinion. If you take taunts off of a tank from another place or copy them, right? Because you're not really removing them. It just says copies them and then puts them on random people on your team. You're you're going to you're end up with people dying that you don't want to die. You're going to have them popping out of stealth and you don't want them to. They're going to go into stealth. Maybe you don't want them to. There's things that about this that just isn't very good. If it were to limit the buffs to only, you know, damage up, damage, you know, damage increase, tenacity increase, uh, you know, those types of things, critical chance increase, dodge, those types of things and not taunt. Sure, I would be this would be very, very good. But because it seems to just do whatever random buffs are over there at the end of her turn, you're going to be bringing over taunt and that sort of stuff to people you don't want taunt on. And I think that that's really, really, really not a good mechanic at all. Uh, if that's the way it ends up working. So with all that said, that is your human faction. This is these are the characters right now. Um, these are your humans. Uh, like I said, I'm going in. I'm going in with Solius. Um, Snorri, Freezard, and Cruel, and Little Batty. That's my team. If you have that team and you've got good runes and that sort of stuff, I don't think you're going to have any issues. Uh, it may take you a little bit. It's a hard event. Um, it's going to be hard. We will live stream it, like I said. It'll be right when the event starts on Monday. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys back on the stream, back on the channel. I really appreciate you guys coming in um, and coming in here and supporting and hitting me up and hitting, giving me the love that you guys have given me in the past. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, drop them down below, and we'll see you next time. Wing Gaming and the Law Intersect.